Hello. Welcome. We are back. Same new location. Different lighting. Because it's nighttime. Do people call it nighttime anymore? Does anyone, did anyone ever call it nighttime? Like, you know, when it's night. Has anyone ever called it nighttime? Hmm. Or is it something just my parents said? I don't know. Someone goes, I get to them Ableton chops. I don't want to know about any of that other shit you was talking about. Let's get into some Ableton, some sound design. By the way, guys, can I talk about anything other than sound design? No. Get back to that sound design. So if you watch the previous two sound design hangouts, maybe I'm not giving you any anxiety because the groove pool is open. Oh man, let's close the groove pool. Oh, it's a good excuse to click these double tildes. Is that what it's called, a tilde? Um, I'm almost tempted to go back into grooves again just because I figured out that thing, which I figured out in the last video, but like just to sort of demonstrate it. Um, but to be honest, when I was thinking about what to do for this sound design hangout, I was like, maybe I'm, maybe I'll just like play with Wavetable a lot because Wavetable is just so great. Um, you know, like operator and analog are good, but it's not really going to surprise you with like new sounds you've never heard before. Like, okay, I guess that's a good place to start. Let's drop analog. You're like, hey, you said wavetable and I'm the biggest wavetable fan in the world. We'll get there and it's the best thing in the world. But just to give you a little bit of an idea here, record enable so we can play notes, of course. So right now with analog, don't let it scare you. And by the way, we're going to probably go through a lot of different synthesizers, do some high level stuff, mess around here. Um, by the way, if you notice this little center display, it changes when you click on these different tabs. So you've got the amplifier tab, which basically anytime you hear amplifier um, with synthesizers specifically, that means volume, okay? That means what does volume do? So there's an envelope here. What does volume do over time? Then you have a filter. You got a filter on all of these synthesizers. That's how you take away and add uh, frequencies, which when you're taking them away, they're getting darker when you're bringing them yeah, you're getting more and then you've got a waveform which if you look at analog and you say oh my god why do i only have four waveforms what is this like the 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 1800s or something you know <laughs> uh yeah so you're always, and this is something I want to talk about regarding sound design, is you're always starting with a waveform, okay? So the most basic is a sine wave, a saw wave, I guess sometimes called a sawtooth wave, but maybe sawtooth is too long. Technically, I guess this is is actually called like a sawtooth wave but like we normally call it a saw wave but sawtooth sounds good like yo give me one of them sawtooths be like oh shit yo all my tracks got sawtooths i'm coming in obtruse gonna drop it on you like the old moose anytime you're gonna start you're gonna be starting with the waveform so we're either going to have a sine wave, which might as well go into audio effects here. Go to utilities, drop a spectrum. Um, saw wave. Let's open this up. 
sine wave, that's what I meant to say. I'm actually going to adjust this. Just one note, one harmonic, which is just the fundamental. Okay. And when we have this sine wave in this device analog, which is using subtractive synthesis, there's really nothing we can do with this filter. Why? Because let's play. It's not doing anything. You'll say, yes, it is. But all it will do is when we get below this note, 300 hertz, it's just going to lower it. Because that's what a, free, a filter does, is it attenuates or lowers frequencies. So right now, the volume just went down. So right now, this is just modulating volume, which it doesn't do because it's a frequency, a filter. Um, but because we're removing the only thing that's here, it gives the effect of lowering its volume. So what do you do in subtractive synthesis? Well, you subtract. So how do you subtract? Well, you're going to have to go get yourself a waveform that has more than just the fundamental frequency. You need to get yourself some frequencies. So we're going to drop a sawtooth or a square wave or even noise. By the way, whenever I need noise, a noise waveform, when I want to do my like ambient noise filtered, relaxing white noise. I use analog. So we're going to go with sawtooth wave, which is this right here, but all of these frequencies. Lower your ears, guys. Lower, lower your ears. Lower your volume right now. All, every single harmonic. Now, when we turn this frequency down, we're going to be lowering these higher harmonics first, because right now this is saying it's a low-pass filter, which says let through everything because this is the highest thing you can hear. And then it goes, now start lowering. So listen. But notice how these little guys dropped. See? I'm going to open it up. So what subtractive synthesis says, and that's what analog does, there's only a few um, synthesis forms. What it does is it basically says, you are going to start because we can turn the filter off, right? And you're going to ha have the whole thing. I'm going to lower this. Okay. But, in, but what you do is you take the filter and you add and remove frequencies over time using these different filter types. Most of the time you're using a low pass. And how do you want to do it? If you just want a sine wave and you want just a sine wave and you want to shape the sine wave with the amplifier, the volume, amplifier, every time, every time amplifier, just think volume. You can boost the filter cutoff. Square. I think so squares sound better. They have less harmonics, but they skip every other one. What are we doing with this? Well, see how this is light? Because we're on that tab. We're not on the filter tab. We're not on the amplifier tab. We are just on this. And you might say, well, what are these dudes down here? Well, we can use them if we want, but we're not going to because we are illustrating right now. Um, so here's what's going on. So you have got this section here, and you, in a straight subtractive uh, fashion, you can choose one of these. You're probably either going to use a saw or a square. You're going to feed it into this filter, which is going to add and subtract. You've got an LFO to add movement to any of these components. It then goes to an amplifier envelope, which you can set, and then that's it. That's it. Kind of boring, huh? Well, once you understand it better, <laughs> you'll realize that subtractive synthesis kind of sounds like good old subtractive synthesis. There isn't a whole lot to do. Now, don't get me wrong. We can add another oscillator. We can detune them. That'll give us that nice detune sound that kind of sounds like a phaser. Oh, what else can we do? Oh, we got a second filter down here. 
And, uh, oh, wow, we actually have access to formant filters. They give that robot voice like, jay, 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 you know, and then you got like different filters and then we can route some of oscillator one to filter one and two. Same thing with oscillator two. That can give a different form, uh, give a different sound, different envelopes on both of the filters. You know what I mean? Like, but at, for the most part, it's not going to sound all that different, okay? Now let's go over to the one and only, sometime it was the workhorse pony, it was the one you used all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, give a standing ovation for one of the biggest OGs in Ableton <laughs> operator. Give a standing ovation. Now operator does the same damn thing basically, but holds your horses. Why, why are horses coming up? What is going on here? So right now you got all these little shells, but this one, A, it's activated, it's turned up, it has to be turned up. That's why these aren't doing anything because they are not turned up, they're down. Forget these. But we're in oscillator A. Now let's choose a waveform. Oh, there's that sine wave again. Oh, there's a bunch of saws. Oh, there's a bunch of squares. That's basically it, okay? Same darn thing. So let's add that bright buzzy saw again, shall we? Oh, it's the same thing, but kind of sounds a little bit worse. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's not go there. And then we've got our filter here, right? So what are we? We're gonna uh, we're gonna take some out. So uh, yeah, what do you want to do? Do you want to come down here and to and uh, put on a square wave? You feeling crazy today? Let's even tick down the transpose because we want it to be a little bit bassier. Let's play it an octave down. Now let's go back. Now let's go back down. Oh, oh. Okay. So you might say, so, so like, what's going on? Um, yeah, you've, 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 you've got like a basic waveform of a sign, some variations of saws variations of squares by the way the the higher uh numbers just mean like more harmonics okay so like but it's still like a saw so it's like it's a saw with three harmonics a saw with four harmonics a saw with 64 harmonics a square with you, you know what i mean going all the way up oh we got white noise of course so um you might say well you know you've got your your sign your saw your square which your basic bread and butter waveforms obviously these little der derivations of them derivations what is it i don't know whatever you got your filter your filter types um so like what's the point you know how's it different well operator does allow you to use subtractive synthesis which we were just talking about which is the only thing analog does but operator is well known for it is for its fm so right now what we've done so far is we've just showed you operator can do what analog does. Maybe you'd rather do what analog does, subtractive synthesis in analog. But operator, you're coming for the FM, baby. You're coming for the FM. Why? Because up to what I just did in operator, you would just do an analog and it probably would do it better. But see this guy, B, not A, not A, where we have this square 16, but B, We'll keep it on sine because this sine wave, we are basically like multiplying into this A square wave when we turn up the volume. So when we turn up this volume, we're not necessarily hearing a sine wave being added on top of it. That would be a very additive synthesis, subtractive synthesis kind of way to do things, um, like adding things and then taking things away with the filter. Right now, we're like, we don't even care about the filter. We want harmonic addition. Like, we, we, we want harmonics to be added and subtracted like you would do with the filter, but with frequency modulation. That frequency coming from the sine wave. So, Right now, nothing has happened yet, but we're going to turn this up and listen. And when you hear what's going to happen, that's some FM synthesis. FM, of course, standing for frequency modulation. Let's go. You might want to like look over here. So you can like modulate that, you know, 
come into audio effects, come into modulators, drop an LFO, map. Come into A, let's drag the release out. Go back into B. Do we got do we got a release on B? By the way, FM is meant to just be done with sine waves. See how it sounds more predictable, better. So like, yeah, you can, uh, you've got a filter and you've got the FM capabilities that we're seeing right here. Okay. Sounds nice. And there's other things we can do. Why don't we drop this course down and let's listen to some bassier frequencies up in here. Let's change this fine tuning to give it a little bit of like oscillator detune type feel to it. Now you can make C modulate B. Go into envelope, but make that happen over time. So we're adding an attack. Gonna take the sustain down a little bit more release. That was just like a very atonal chord. So it's wonderful, but like you get the FM feel, you got the use of the filter, but at the end of the day, like all you're really doing is you're, 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 you're getting the sounds of frequency modulation, which are good. But like frequency modulation has like a sort of sound to it, right? And as we saw earlier with analog, you know, it's got its subtractive synthesis sound. Now, for a long period of time, pretty much every synthesizer was either like a subtractive synthesizer, because that was the first synthesizer ever. So like, someone's gonna be like, that's not true. Back in the day, synthesizers technically had been around since the 1920s. And if you want to go, you know what I mean? Like when synthesizers were on the scene, pretty much like in the 60s, late 60s, they were rare. They didn't start to like become, you didn't start seeing them on stages and in every studio to like the 70s, but like 60s, 70s, it was like subtractive synthesizers. And then like, I think like it was like late 70s, 80s. That's when like FM came on the scene. So like a lot of like movies in the 80s have like FM. And I don't know when wavetables started, which is where we're going to go next, of course. Um, but like you just have so many possibilities with wavetable synthesis. So, um, but we still have the filter. We've got all of these different like wavetables to go through. In fact, I want to play with this one because I just know this is going to sound good. But then we have all of this modulation possibilities, you know, and we have all of these different ways it can sound. So rather than having, you know, to start with either a basic uh, sine wave saw square and then just a filter or even operator, which does the same thing also filter, but then we get to do all nice FM. 
On Wavetable, we've got all of these interesting different wavetables that we can morph through while it plays. We can modulate with LFOs, all of these parameters. We've got all of these envelopes. If you come over here to this section, you've got this unison, all these different unison modes, which are all very unique. You then got down here, these other different possibilities where you can like warp and stretch and even modulate that um, over here. So it's almost like, and I kind of knew this from the jump. Um, I kind of knew, I was like, you know, eventually when I get to know Wavetable like very good and I get to be even more comfortable using subtractive synthesis, you know, FM synthesis, you know, I was like, I can see pretty much using just Wavetable all the time. Cause like you can pretty much do, I mean, if, if we go back to the default, so we go to basics and we go to basic shapes, <laughs> It starts at sine wave, just like every other one, and then it slowly morphs between a saw wave. So this is like, and then all the way up here, like a square wave. And then you can use a frequency. And of course, there's resonance. And look, we uh, could put on FM and give some FM to this. Wait a second. Wait a second. Oh my God, why, why is it? And you can modulate all that shit, like go to LFO one. So when you click on LFO one, this is the parameters. Let's turn off retrig. Let's lower the rate. Let's go on back into the matrix. What is this tune? Where's tune? FM one pitch, sign some, see? Yeah, FM definitely does do that. Let's do the amount very slow. I don't know if I like this thing going to like zero hertz and negative. Wavetable is like the greatest thing because you just have so many more possibilities, so much more flexibilities. And what's cool too is you've got a second filter as well. Serial? No, I think it's parallel. Um, let's choose this. Yeah, let's move that. Let's get filter two on here. Let's get get LFO. Let's let's uh, lower it. And of course, you can throw down some drive. Um, Let's get some movement over there for LFO one for filter one frequency. But um, I don't want to let all this come through, all these high frequencies. So I'm gonna go to audio effects. I'm gonna go to EQ and filters. Drop an auto filter here. Drop an auto filter here. It's like way too much. I'm actually going to LFO one. I'm gonna turn the retrig on. I don't see I don't want this thing to go that way. I don't want that. Um, so let's turn the tune up. Yeah, and see now it's like It's interesting. It's actually just too much. I'm just gonna get rid of this crap. Let's see. Yeah, I want LFO one to do that. Um, maybe we'll put it here. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, let's go to envelope two, give it a little bit of an attack because I want this to st Well, no, I guess it's already doing that. Um, that's why like when you have these LFOs, like the retrig basically says, um, The retrig says, so like, so like, take a look at this wave, this LFO, right? It's saying when you hit a note, you start here, you move up, which watch, it's going to go up and then it's going to go down. It's going to go down further than where we at right now, you know, because we're like right here. Check this out. It's going up 
Now it's gonna go down farther, watch. Farther, yeah. So it's gonna go back up to here. And it's doing that over 0.12 hertz a second, right? Now the reason why, and so anytime we play it, it's gonna start at this, so like it's gonna rest back here and it's gonna go up. And, and the reason why it's doing that is because this is re-triggering from this spot. Um, it won't do that if we uncheck it, but I want it to start predictably because when it starts, I don't want it to go down. Um, if we turn this off, it's not going to reset each time. It's just gonna like do its thing, right? But if I put this, it's gonna start each time. It's gonna start from that spot. Now you might say, oi. You might think like, yeah, you would wanna do that all the time, but a lot of times you just want it to like freely move. It's almost like this retrig is kind of giving it an envelope here, meaning like it's starting at that same spot each time it gets triggered and it's following an envelope. Sounds good. I want to go back to that one thing that I liked. Was it distortion? That's too much. See, you want to be able to like cycle through and have it sound good. Was it filter? No, it wasn't filter. Where was it? Was it harmonics? Oh, there we go. Remember I said I thought this would just sound good? Now this is the oscillator position which we can modulate. So if we come into oscillator one position, let's give it some, let's do LFO two. So that's extra modulation that like you just, cause it's morphing through this wavetable, but it's staying in pitch. So it doesn't matter if we're up here, it's a, it's a D note. C, D, come down here. It's still D. It's just the harmonics out here are different. So I hope that's making sense. Um, something is saying drop a chorus. Yeah, of course, definitely, of course, definitely, of course. All right. I think we can end it tonight with um, just taking a piece of audio. So we were like playing with MIDI, but now we just got like a piece of audio. Let's click play. This is a bathroom fan. So like that bathroom back there has got a fan if you take a large dump, you might want to put the fan on. <laughs> so, like, this is basically white noise. You know? It's like, what, what would I do? Well, let's get a filter. Sound familiar? Put some filter drive on there. So it's basically like white noise, but it's like different and more unique. Why don't we go back to uh, pitch and modulation? Let's drop that chorus again. Very nice. Let's lower the rate though. This so we. Deactivate. Even though I was recording this in a room that had reverb, um, you know, for sound design, hybrid reverb would be good. You know what I mean? Take down the dry wet, put the bass in mono. This is like when the bass goes mono. Maybe 200 is fine, or thereabouts. Let's take up the decay. Let's go to textures. Let's just click through till something sounds interesting. Something sounds complimentary. Oh, 
Oh, I've got a really dirty idea. Let's throw a corpus. Let's play this till it sounds good. Just these settings. Membrane always sounds good. 